Media governance refers to all processes of governing our media landscape, informal, internal the organization or external, that try to govern, in other words, to rule, regulate, facilitate, monitor and influence media behavior. The forces that govern our media landscape differ from time to time and place to place. But if you look at it from a great distance, we could say that there are at least three spheres usually influencing media behavior. Firstly, there is the media sphere itself, consisting of all those people that play a role in the sending of messages in society. They have their own reasons for sending messages, of course. Perhaps they want to make money or convince the world that their standpoint is the right one. Perhaps they want to show the world what they can make or help others by educating, informing or entertaining them. These people might be individual senders. For example, if someone writes a blog post or stands on top of a soapbox to hold a speech. Or they can be a group of people that collectively make and distribute messages. These could be media organizations like a television channel or a newspaper, for example. Secondly, there are often all kinds of rules and demands in place set by rulers and their government. Today, these are often formalized in rules and legislation. But history shows enough examples of laws that are vague at best. Rulers would just stop by with a big sword or a gun or whatever to make their demands clear. Finally, there are all kinds of societal expectations and demands. This is a complex dynamic of all kinds of subgroups in society, like audiences, interest groups, investors, competitors, partner organizations and many more. All these different factions mostly have informal means of influencing media behavior. They have commercial power to support a medium, or the other way around, the power to boycott, of course. They can protest, petition, file a complaint, or try to intimidate the senders. But in a positive way, they can also praise, give out prizes and awards, clamor for public recognition of a medium, etc. Some scholars argue that there is also a fourth technological sphere of influence. This sphere is important because technology can make governance easier or disrupt it entirely. The technological means of today create opportunities for monitoring that never existed before. But they also create possibilities for a free flow of information from individuals to enormous amounts of people in little to no time. We can easily imagine that the introduction of new technologies throughout the ages like the printing press, the radio, television or the computer have created a stress on the governance system of that time. Each new technology required the three other spheres to change and find a new balance, reinventing norms and setting up new guidelines and new rules of conduct. Today, we see this with the rapid innovation of mobile technology and online services. It will not take you a lot of time to find reactions of politicians or pressure groups that demand some sort of change in our current system of rules and regulation because of changing technologies.